as uh, Alona said, I'm a senior uh, UI developer and uh, I like React and uh, I want to tell you some story about uh, concurrent rendering and uh, how it was created, which uh, road uh, React team passed <laughs> to implement that and uh, how we may use it in uh, real life. So let's move to agenda. Uh, according to agenda, I'll uh, talk a little bit React, uh, React in mo React modern state, and uh, renew our memory about what is React at all. Uh, after that, I'll explain motivation uh, of React uh, to evolution uh, for React evolution. Why uh, we have to move to existing uh, concurrent uh, mode. After that, I'll tell uh, the story of the implementation concurrent uh, into React, uh, how it appeared, uh, which uh, uh, obstacles were in the front of uh, React team and uh, how they uh, overcome them. After that, we have some coding fun and uh, then conclusions and uh, questions. So let's move to, uh, to the next slide. Okay, what is React? React is a powerful, powerful JavaScript library for building a uh, user interface. And uh, the first question, how uh, big is it? How famous is it? And uh, let's go to survey of uh, yearly survey of uh, our favorite uh, site. It's Stack Overflow. Uh, and the last survey is uh, 2022. Uh, and according to this survey, uh, React takes uh, almost leading place uh, around other web frameworks and technology. Uh, previously in 2021, it was uh, in the first place, but now not just this leading that. And um, uh, the creators of React, its corporation of evil, uh, is Facebook. If uh, also uh, from that survey, uh, we can uh, look at uh, uh, how React uh, is interested by other developers and uh, how uh, people who use React are satisfied with that. So the uh, size of uh, uh, this sector of this circle shows the track also very uh, famous. And uh, these lines, which uh, uh, connect a, a different service, shows interesting of people from the different uh, web frameworks and technologies and their interests in uh, particular technology. So we may see that React are interested and uh, React developers are really satisfied uh, with their framework, with their library. And <laughs> me as a React developer may, uh, may say that I'm really satisfied and I really enjoy it. So now I want to move the motivation uh, to the motivation, uh, to the motivation why uh, we have to think about uh, concurrency and uh, how to how React team go to uh, that thing, that thought that we have to do something. Yeah, and uh, in order to explain the problem, let's uh, return to React basics, is JavaScript. What is JavaScript? JavaScript is our programming language. Uh, it's more uh, single-threaded and asynchronous. But uh, the main uh, thing thing uh, which we uh, have to think about for now, it's a uh, sing uh, single thread. What does it mean? It means that React handles everything in, in, in one single main thread, whether it be JavaScript code, user events, paint, renders, layouts, reflows, and maybe something oh. other. So uh, what does it mean for us? Usually it's uh, don't uh, bring any problems, etc. But the single thread is uh, blocking, and uh, from time to time it can cause some issues. 
So, for example, uh, let's uh, return to our React. Our React is uh, built on JavaScript. So all tasks which uh, he uh, perform are occupy main thread. And what does it mean? When we have some really big task which performing in the main thread, like heavy re render or something other, usually it's heavy re render. And uh, during this, uh, uh, during uh, main thread is blocked, user tries to make some event whether it be uh, button clicks or, for example, input inside the uh, input areas, etc. So we will see some problem. The problem that our user interface became, becomes uh, unresponsive. And uh, what does it mean for UX, UX uh, user experience and uh, for our user? It means that our user became unsatisfied. So, our user experience degrades, and uh, we can even say that uh, unsatisfied user can cause uh, business uh, uh, lacks of money, etc. So it's really bad. <clears throat> Sorry. Mm. What is possible? Let's think about possible solution. How we can uh, overcome this issue with uh, unresponsiveness? And the first thing which can <clears throat> come in our mind is to move uh, our uh, heavy tasks into the separate thread. Yeah, I said that uh, JavaScript is a single thread, but it was uh, before. A worker. So, uh, what is worker? Workers is uh, uh, instrument which uh, allows us to move our heavy calculation to the separate thread. But if we <clears throat> uh, look a little bit closer about uh, in worker specifics, let, let's look a little bit closer to the worker specific. So what is workers? What, uh, what there are? Uh, there is something which uh, performs in the separate thread. The only way to exchange uh, with uh, uh, the thread is uh, message passing. What does it mean? In order to uh, send something to worker, we have to create message. And uh, also we have to listen answer from that worker. But the second uh, and the second uh, thing is that that worker is really separated from the main thread. So there is no access to uh, any variable, variables, et cetera, from the main thread from the worker, to the main thread from the worker and vice versa. And also there's no access to the DOM. What does it mean for us? It means that the workers are really good for data processing, but they're hard to use for UI uh, related stuff. And uh, I may say that from time to time, it's almost impossible. So it's not our cup of tea. Okay, so, um, and now I suggest to uh, step to other uh, uh, slides to other slides to other parts uh, of my presentation is the story of the current track and uh, i'll tell you how track team uh, overcome these issues and uh, how they thought and how react uh, changed uh, during that time and uh, i suggest you to move to 2017 yeah it's about more than uh, about five years ago. And uh, what was the most remarkable uh, thing in 2017 for React? It was the uh, React 16 uh, release. And uh, what the main uh, feature of React 16 was? It's React Fiber. What is React Fiber? React Fiber uh, is uh, a new engine of 
React. And uh, I suggest you to turn a little bit into documentation and uh, what React developers uh, wrote inside their blog about uh, that uh, React version. So what we are interested at that they uh, write that React 16 is the first version of React built on top of the new core architect architecture codenamed Fiber. And the second interesting thing, perhaps the most exciting area we are working on is acting rendering, a strategy for practically scheduling rendering work by uh, periodically yielding execution to the browser. Okay, and here we have uh, some interesting demo. I'll show you. So uh, pay attention in uh, this uh, black uh, square. It's spinning, but uh, during the rendering, during render and the re render, it uh, spinning starts to degrade. So user experience became a little bit responsive, but somehow React developers uh, activate async functionality and voila, there is magic. Magic uh, without any degradation, etc. So it's really impressed. I just want to uh, remind you that there is 2017 in the year, and uh, it's really awesome. But uh, what about um, access uh, for the user to this functionality? And uh, the answer uh, is pretty simple. The the answer is that React uh, community is really big, and uh, there are too many uh, different projects. And uh, I guess React team uh, didn't want to break any uh, anything for any project, so they decided to experiment with this uh, feature a little bit more, and uh, to uh, show that it is true let's to uh, let's take a look inside the uh, original code of react 16 and uh, we can see that there are some react dom feature flags the first feature flag user fi uh, use fiber it means that they activated fiber for all but fiber i think scheduling was uh, disabled and uh, why did they do this. They did that uh, in order to test it inside their Facebook and the entire project. Let's return to fiber a little bit. So what was the fiber? We can see that at that time, it already was uh, kind of asynchronous and uh, kind of fast. So let's uh, uh, think about this. Uh, Take a look at the fiber. What is this? The fiber is uh, a right over our internal algorithm and rendering, rendering engine that allows to more efficient and flexible rendering. How did uh, it do? When React starts to render uh, a component, uh, rendering a component tree, it creates a fiber for each uh, uh, component and organize them into a tree-like structure now known as fiber tree. So for each uh, RAC component, uh, RAC created the separate fiber and created the uh, tree. Once we will have to, once uh, we get any changes, uh, we made the copy of this fiber tree and uh, we, uh, started the mechanism which known us as reconciliation. What is reconciliation? It's comparison existing tree and new tree and defining the differences between uh, these trees. So, but uh, how fiber uh, became so fast? It became uh, so fast because uh, of thing which we Called chunk. When we talked before 
uh, we saw that uh, from time to time in JavaScript, we have really long tasks which can uh, block main thread. But, so what Fiber did? It uh, distracted this long task into smaller one and uh, prioritize them. What does it mean? It means that the uh, engine uh, started to uh, perform some task, but from time to time, it returns to the main thread uh, to check whether more priority uh, tasks are come. So uh, what does it mean for us? It means that uh, a more priority task like uh, user interactions, user input, uh, maybe animations, uh, was uh, has higher priority, and uh, they started uh, fired uh, more fre fre frequently than other tasks. And according to uh, this task, uh, sub small subtask priority. There are different priority levels, and according to that priority levels, there is a timeout whether a fiber looked at the main thread and check uh, whether new uh, more uh, prior prioritized task task uh, come. So uh, we may say that uh, that's how fiber works for now. Uh, and uh, it worked uh, in React 16, but uh, we, as a user, uh, didn't have such possibility to use that. It was only for uh, React team. And uh, moreover, uh, React team has other problems that uh, uh, this mechanism was. Uh, uh, under the hood of React, uh, React engine. We didn't have public API to interact with that, me with that mechanism. So uh, let's uh, move about it uh, a little bit uh, to uh, March uh, 2018. And reacting uh, returned to us with update regarding to async rendering. They, as we know, they made some tests in face, tests in Facebook, etc. And uh, in that uh, blog from the March 2018, they become they returned us to us with some update. This update was that uh, some lifecycle methods are incompatible with async rendering. And uh, yeah, uh, if you uh, return that moment, it's the same, mo exactly that moment when that uh, React uh, lifecycle methods get unsafe, unsafe prefix. So uh, what else we get from uh, New version of React after this announcement is the new life cycle, uh, life cycle method. And uh, why did we get that? We did, we get that because of uh, the chunk uh, structure. Uh, we uh, get the possibility get possibility to uh, launch uh, something between uh, long tasks. So that's why we get the possibility to implement a new method. Uh, and also in React uh, 16.3, we get new context APIs, uh, like React create context. After, if we move forward, after React 16.3, we get uh, a few minor updates like React memo, React lazy, and something uh, else, but uh, React Mono and React Lazy also uh, is new invention because of uh, because of uh, Fiber and uh, how it works. So 
Uh, now, let's move to October 2018. In October 2018, uh, in React conference were two uh, main things. The main thing, uh, the first main thing was the hooks were introduced. So then Abramov introduced us new uh, API for development. And the second thing that uh, was not so remarkable, that thing uh, was connected with uh, async rendering term. It was rebranded as a concurrent track. Why uh, React team decided to do that? They uh, think, thought uh, that the term async is very broad term that describes many things and why concurrent track doesn't but in fact encompass many capabilities. So they think the word concurrent correctly emphasizes the part that make it special. So uh, what does meant meant? What uh, concurrent track meant? It meant that uh, concurrent track uh, could work and, uh, and can work on multiple tasks at a time and switch between them using cooperative multitasking according to their priority. As I say, this mechanism, which we call prioritizing and scheduling. Uh, the second uh, thing is that concurrent React can specially render a tree without committing the result to the DOM. What does it mean? It means that according to priority, uh, we can define uh, whether we want to render uh, some something now, whether we want to render something later, or we may uh, leave this render at all. So it was made uh, in order to not render, uh, for example, invisible uh, <clears throat> content. And the other thing, like switching and uh, uh, between small chunks, uh, um, prioritization and uh, uh, the prioritization and uh, uh, provides pos possibility not block the main thread. Uh, we are returning to the main thread from time to time. And uh, finally, React 6.8. Uh, 16.8 was released. And uh, this uh, was really a uh, big thing in React for world. It's uh, the uh, official presentation of React hooks. So what React hooks, uh, how they presented React hooks and what is it? The rack hooks, it's uh, the thing uh, which uh, uh, allow, allowed us, us to simpli uh, simplify uh, component logic. It improved code reusability. We uh, get possibility to destructure uh, into higher, uh, in, in destructure our component in the higher level of uh, abstract. Uh, we return to functional component. And as the uh, React uh, team says that functions are more, uh, are simpler than, uh, than classes for uh, users. Uh, also, we get better performance of, uh, because this is function and uh, we uh, wouldn't, need uh, to create uh, any classes. Easier testing, because uh, there are uh, React components uh, can be pure function. Uh, we can uh, mock any, any dependencies, etc. And uh, according to it, it's easier testing. And uh, as we uh, knew a little bit later that hooks were designed as a part to help developers 
naturally write code that is most compatible with concurrent form. So with this uh, uh, post in their blog, they just explain their motivation that the, motiv the one of the main aspects of React hooks was implementation of uh, concurrent. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, what about uh, React 17 and uh, releases <clears throat> before that? They uh, wouldn't so remarkable, and uh, React 17 uh, was considered like uh, mm, something, uh, some step between 16 and 18 version. Uh, they tried to implement some new uh, uh, new uh, differentiated between different modes, like legacy mode, blocking mode, concurrent mode. But unfortunately, it was dead end for concurrent draft. They uh, tried to do that. Uh, they already released the uh, features uh, like they provided possibility to try concurrent feature in uh, React 17, but uh, the concept of different mode was uh, incorrect. And now uh, we are in React 18. And uh, what does it mean? What uh, became when React 18 released. Uh, the first thing that the uh, React team abandoned uh, concurrent React term. Instead of that, they start to talk about concurrent feature. What does it mean? It means that they uh, left uh, the thought that all applications have to work in concurrent React. And instead of that, they uh, forced us as a user to use concurrent feature, whether we want to implement in some part, implement them in some part of uh, our application. It's like performance uh, improvement, which we may uh, uh, make in uh, some uh, weak places. What other new features uh, were released in React 18? It's automatic batching. It's really cool. Uh, suspense feature and it's other thing which correct, connected with uh, concurrent React. Uh, transitions. It's uh, something uh, that represents concurrent features and other features. And uh, also React 18 uh, presented new hooks like new use ID, use insertion effect, and most interesting for us is concurrent feature, use transition, use different value, and use uh, in external in external store. Okay, and now I suggest you to uh, move a little bit uh, back to documentation and. Uh, Let's uh, develop a little bit the uh, uh, React 18 documentation together. Uh, we can see that uh, they tell us about concurrent React, uh, what is concurrent uh, features, uh, about suspense uh, API, which uh, uh, became uh accessible for all not uh, uh it, it became more stable and uh, it uh, is accessible for all react users it's a part of uh public api other thing is several components uh that, that are still the world it's also a cool feature uh and what's uh, let's move to what new block it's uh, automatic budget the first thing is uh, automatic batch. What does it mean for us? Uh, what 
what is that batching? Batching is uh, coupling uh, some uh, state updates into one big update. But what was the problem with that bat batching before? The problem was that React uh, could do that updates uh, quite good if that updates was in the body of uh, uh, component. But if this uh, set states, et cetera, were in the set timeouts, uh, maybe uh, some promises, use effects, et cetera, they anyway uh, perform separately. So in React 18, uh, React team takes that and uh, that um, set states are working now correctly, even from timeouts, promises, and uh, etc. other closures. Other thing is transitions. Uh, it's the part uh, of React uh, which allows us to perform uh, concurrent uh, some, something concurrent. What concurrent means that we may uh, if uh, we have some updates, we may pass some uh, uh, updates and uh, move to most relevant and uh, most uh, uh, useful recent updates without degradation of user experience and uh, without loose responsiveness of our application. Um, I'll tell a little bit about uh, a little bit later about uh, the uh, concurrent feature uh, and uh, about transition and, and just let's uh, finish with uh, uh, new new things in React 18 introduction. Uh, what does it mean, new suspense feature? It uh, became uh, public and suspense. It's also a feature which allows us to show fall, fall back once uh, uh, ch child component uh, wasn't rendered. And the uh, other interesting thing, which are in our, which are not in our topic, and uh, let's move to new hooks. Uh, the first hook is use ID, uh, hook which uh, used for uh, generating uh, unique IDs for forms uh, for server side rendering, etc. Uh, the second hook. Uh, use insertion effect. It was a new hook that allows uh, uh, CSS and JS uh, to work more performant. And three hooks uh, which represent uh, concurrent feature. The, and now I suggest you to move to some coding and uh, investigate how this feature works. Let's start uh, from uh, the biggest problem. For example, I created uh, some uh, simple application. Uh, and uh, let's take a look how it works with uh, simple input. What it applica this application does, uh, it renders the list of components. Uh, there are about uh, 10,000 components. And every time when I type anything inside this input, uh, it updates all 10,000 components. So yeah, it's really big uh, task. And uh, let's see how it impacts uh, our user experience. And um, so that I suggest you to take a look inside the, how it usually work without any uh, concurrent features. So we can see if we type really slowly, everything updates uh, quite uh, fast and uh, we can, can see any performance degradations. But if we try and 
to type really fastly, we can see that our input became uh, really unresponsive from time to time. And moreover, um, I in my MacBook, it works really fastly because uh, I have quite performant my MacBook. But let's try uh, to take a look how it works in uh, a little bit slower devices. Let's slow down my CPU uh, for time. And uh, now we can see how it's hard. I can type anything and uh, our uh, responsiveness uh, almost stuck. Yeah. So, uh, what are possible solutions for that behavior? The first thing which came in my mind uh, is the bounce input. Uh, use a special uh, function uh, which allows us to uh, make uh, handler on change handler handler call uh, a, a little bit. Uh, not so frequently uh, as it is. The first uh, thing is the uh, using the bones. Let's switch it. Into the bones method. Use the bones using method. And uh, let's take a look how it works. Uh, so it works OK. Since I'm uh, typing, but uh, once uh, I make a pause, or if I type in very slowly, I can see that unresponsiveness in our input. And uh, yeah, it's uh, getting much better than it was, but we still have still have some degradation because of uh, the treasury. Uh, other uh, solution, as I said, is the using uh, throttle function Mm. Oh, there's so something strange. Uh, excuse you me. You have missed H. Yeah. Th. Th. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you for the hint. Yeah, let's take a look how it works uh, with throttle. Uh, so with throttle, it uh, becomes still unresponsive. So um, and now we have uh, we get a new possibility. The new possibility is to listen only new updates of uh, this input and. Uh, uh, maybe pass uh, some uh, useless render. So what is the problem? The problem is that uh, <clears throat> while we type in, all uh, renders cause the state update and they're moved to the queue. And every update, uh, every render are performed from the queue and all of them are blocking the main thread. What uh, concurrent features are provide us what they allow us they allow us to to skip some unusual state update and uh, if uh, during some update we get new state it allow us to interrupt rendering and uh, start 
new, more relevant rendering for user. And uh, in order to <clears throat> test it, uh, let's switch to concurrent list input and uh, let's investigate it. Inside the concurrent uh, list input, uh, I used a new uh, feature, a new uh, uh, hook is used to transi transition. What this hook says us, what has changed? It changed that uh, inside our handler, uh, we started to use uh, function which provides uh, by this hook a start transition. What does it mean? Uh, it means that it's declaration that uh, we started to update something. The second thing, uh, uh, which we have to make in order to uh, enable this feature is to divide uh, value uh, which we change and uh, which is <coughs> respons responsible for uh, input control uh, with the value which uh, um, we pass to the list. And uh, other thing that uh, we say uh, React uh, via this user uh, transition API that uh, we want uh, change this value uh, concur concurrently. And uh, we want to say that once uh, inside this block, we will get a new uh, state update that uh, it says that React should abandon uh, rendering for previous update, it is still uh, performing and starts new update. And uh, let's take a look how it works. So I'm starting to type in, type. I type quite fastly. And uh, we see, uh, see like a jumps with uh, interface. We see that we don't have uh, uh, some views uh, between uh, my typing. Uh, we still ha have some uh, performance degradation and uh, res less responsiveness of, of input, but uh, they're kind of not so remarkable. And uh, I'm not suffer uh, so much from that. And uh, other pros of uh, implementing this functionality is that I finished my type typing and I see result which uh, correspond to the screen uh, to the string I typed here. Uh, okay, other interesting thing is uh, uh, the first argument of this turbo which returned from uh, use transition. It, it is is pending. What is pending? Is pending it's a uh, flag which show us that something is rendering and uh, we can see when when i change uh, this input and while uh, my uh, view updates i see some uh, i can show some preloader to the user to show him that something happened uh, in the case of uh, usual sync uh input or the bounce the bounce input it's uh, uh kind of hard to show uh user something because in that moment when rendering performs we our ux is tougher and uh, that's other pretty cool thing okay uh so uh what we are uh told about use transition and uh, what are other uh, hooks for and uh, what their difference what is uh, let's talk about use different value and what is their difference 
use deferred value as uh, something uh, quite wide from uh, used transitions. And uh, to be honest, if we go to uh, React code, code uh, base, we will see that uh, they are quite similar, etc. So um, let's take a look how use transition works. Not use transition, but uh, use the bold values value work. In order to that, let's move to application and uh, enable just uh, think uh, list input. So our code uh, works synchronously. Uh, and uh, what's the difference uh, between uh, use transition and use different value? The difference between that hooks is uh, the side from which uh, we want to uh, look at uh, state changes. If uh, from the side of uh, use transition, it's, import it's important to us uh, to uh, start transition whether we need. Uh, we have, uh, once we have access for uh, function for state changes, etc., we can define when we want to start transition. But for example, if we are not important, uh, when it is not important for us uh, that uh, thing that it's not important whether we want change, trans, uh, change state or we want, we just want to listen. If we want to only to listen update and according to this updates, uh, pass some unusual uh, render. And in this case, we have to use uh, use the bounce value. So to use the bounce value uh, hook, we will move to uh, other side. It's to the list component, which is responsible for uh, list rendering. It's consumer of our value. As you can see, I switched to usual sync input. And uh, how to enable, how to uh, edit here. So let's import it from React. For first. And uh, let's use it. So how it works? I believe you have your browser uh, still throttled down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, you're right. Thank you. Thank you for the great hint. Uh, okay. Uh, let's use uh, this use different value uh, hook. So uh, as I said, if we are uh, not interested interested in update store, but we are interested in consuming store. Uh, we use this hook. Uh, what does it hook get as argument? As argument, it gets uh, our state, which we have to listen. And uh, what does it return? It returns different value, and uh, if value which we pass to use different value hook is changed uh, quite uh, fast, then uh, different value will uh, be changed not so fast. And it will allow us to uh, render, to pass some unusual, uh, not unusual, but some, uh, uh, inappropriate renders and uh, render uh, the render the view which uh, correspond to the latest uh, state, latest state and latest value. And uh, so, in order to uh, use that, we just have to pass different value here. And now let's try. So we can see 
I'm typing quite fast. We can see not so fast, uh, uh, not so big UX degradation. But anyway, we always see uh, changes which correspond to our uh, latest state. Moreover, uh, we can uh, go forward and uh, we even can uh, implement some preloader for that. So in order to implement preloader, like uh, is pending state for uh, use transition hook. We just made the following hint. Uh, separate line. Like we'll compare value which we get with value which is different. And according to that, we will show our preloader. So if you can see, change state is changing. While it's changing, we see the same preloader. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it's about uh, these two really useful uh, hooks which we uh, use now and improve performance uh, of our application. And uh, what about other uh, hook which name use uh, sync external store? This hook also applied uh, concurrent features but it applies it uh, from uh, different stores, whether it be a browser store, whether it would be Redux, et cetera. So um, it's mostly created by for uh, libraries, uh, store libraries creators, and for us, like users uh, uh, of that state, which came from the store, and uh, which we want to make uh, concurrent as well. Um, I'll show you a small demo from this documentation, how it works, and uh, uh, I'll explain a little bit how it works uh, in, uh, in examples which they provide here. So what uh, use sync external store uh, get as argument? The first argument is subscription, which uh, provide us uh, which is function which uh, subscribes uh, into some uh, store update and uh, return uh, unsubscribe uh, function function uh, something like similar similar to the function which we uh, may pass to uh, use effect uh, the second thing is uh, get snapshot it's uh, the snapshot is the state uh, which we get may get from store e, and uh, the stored one not important argument and it's a get server snapshot it's uh, uh, mostly for server side rendering or we can set the default uh, state inside there so let's uh, take a look inside the example like uh, the first example is uh, Sub, sub, uh, subscription into, into internal store. It's like uh, uh, some um, something similar to Redux. So uh, here we can see how we do it. We pass from the store uh, some subscription function and uh, some uh, some function for getting snapshot. Uh, what we have inside store. The first thing it's uh, uh, get snapshot. Uh, 
not not the first. The first thing is subscription, like uh, it's listeners uh, which we uh, uh, which we set here inside the list of listener. The second thing, uh, the second argument which we pass, second thing and the second argument which we pass to uh, use uh, think external store. It's a function for uh, getting uh, snapshots and uh, the third thing which we have to implement it's our action which update our state and uh, launch all event listeners and uh, here we can see that the code how it works so this store this state comes to, from store and uh, you uh, uh, think external store is uh, responsible for uh, if uh, this store uh, would be updated uh, too fast or too frequently, it uh, may also uh, pass some unusual renders, abandon them, and uh, uh, render our application uh, according to the newest state. Uh, other example uh, here is a uh, representation uh, how to uh, subscribe inside the uh, online offline uh, interface uh, uh, of uh, browser but uh, if I, if I try to uh, use it to show you I think I would be online <laughs> oh by the way no I wouldn't be online uh, let's take a look at that so uh, we also have to function it's subscribe and get snapshot uh, so we are subscribing inside the two uh, events from the browser. It's online and offline event. And then, as I said, we return uh, to uh, function for unsubscription. As a snapshot, we subscribe inside the navigator property is is uh, online, which is responsible uh, for uh, property which uh, show us whether user online or offline. Let's go to the network and try to go offline. And we will see that this property changes. Yeah, so here we show how I show how we can uh, also subscribe in the browser API. Okay, and uh, let's return to our presentation and uh, let's a little bit sum up uh, the story of the Re React and the uh, React concurrent and how we came to that here. Uh, there is a really long role for implemented uh, this feature and became concurrent. Uh, as for me, it also was a real big invention that uh, some uh, some separated uh, pieces, some separated uh, decisions of React team are became in whole uh, picture and uh, uh, moved us the state where we are like uh, new uh, context deprecation of life cycle method hooks uh, uh, release etc so now we are concurrent and uh, we may use it and I guess that's all for me thank you Alexander maybe uh, someone has questions I have one. Please. Yes, sir. Uh, not directly related to your presentation, but maybe you know some receipts uh, about mm, suspense component you mentioned already. Uh, is there a way to use suspense component to show a fallback in case that some underlying component fetching data from the third party API? If you know uh, what I mean. 
Yeah, I know, I know. It's uh, also interesting understanding of suspense. Uh, REC developers, uh, not REC team, presented us suspense. And uh, when it was like an experimental feature, I'll just uh, pass it uh, uh, through, through myself. And now it's live. And I tried to uh, realize for what suspense was created. I tried to use it with a different value because it's for me it was uh, kind of obvious. If you want to pass something, uh, you may show preloader and uh, we may bind suspense components somehow here. Uh, and I tried to be honest and uh, I didn't succeed. And I wondered why. I started to uh, look at documentation of, of suspense. And uh, started to think, okay, I have Tuscans uh, component. Good. Uh, I have uh, fallback. Good. But what is condition for launching that fallback? And uh, that question didn't uh, uh, came from my mind. I didn't understand uh, how we can for Tuscans to show this callback. And uh, once uh, I started to investigate this uh, uh, example, I realized how to do it. So uh, in order to show this suspense, we have a uh, good example, like, <laughs> yeah, there is uh, the easiest example, how it works. Like uh, we have artist, we have button, which fetch artist. And the uh, artist is album, album component. When we press this button, we can see loading and get that. Uh, it was kind of interesting. I don't see any condition to launch fall back here. So I started to think, uh, let's uh, take a look album component. And uh, in order to see it, we let's go to code and box. Uh, let's go to album component. And uh, let's see how it works. Mm, okay. According to- This is about modern use hook. No, no, no. Uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, I see that uh, they use some use hook. I look at looking here, it, it is not here. So I'm looking at that file and they say, okay, use it just the uh, custom hook. Okay, good. What is album? Albums is uh, the things, things which we are rendered. Okay, cool. So let's investigate, uh, uh, it's uh, understandable but that here we fetch data here we show this data like albums, etc. But what use hook uh, does? As the answer that this hook returns promise. And what does it mean? As I understand, suspense uh, suspense hook, the trigger for showing that callback is uh, backing uh, uh, is returning from the component uh, promise. So if React see inside uh, its children somewhere uh, promised in pending status, it shows this, this fallback. Uh, once this promise resolve, resolves, it return value. And uh, we render entire component. So as for me, it's a pretty clever and simple solution. Uh, does it good answer to your question or no? Yeah, thank you very much. Because I'm trying to find uh, this answer a couple of times and without any success. <laughs> now uh, I have a direction to investigate it deeper. Yeah, yeah. I in guess uh, it's just uh, looking for some promises in, ch in the, its children in the tree under 
uh, the suspense and according to that it's just firing the, that fall back yeah any other questions looks like no 